is the apostolate a covenant between an apostle who preaches and the Holy Spirit of Jesus who acts? When Jesus ascended to heaven on the day of his ascent, the angel appeared to the apostles and put them to work, told them to proclaim the gospel, to proclaim this good news joyfully. The apostles did so, and from the beginning we see that they were gifted with charism, that is to say, with a power coming from the Holy Spirit, which had proven their message. When some healed the sick, while others raised the dead and preached a message from heaven, people obviously listened. Whoever, beyond these extraordinary signs, well, what makes the apostolate is effectively the aliens between God and the apostles, unnecessary servants, because God, if he so desires, can in an instant appear and make all those he wants to be Christians. Concerning the apostles, to whom he asked to act, it is the principle of subsidiarity. God prefers to act through his children, but obviously the effectiveness of action comes only from the Holy Spirit. It is a dogma of faith which says faith is a gift from God. It must be taken seriously. No apostle has ever given faith to anyone. He may radiate faith, give a conviction that stirs people. But if the Holy Spirit does not come into their heart to express themselves, to prove by his intimate presence that it is really he who is speaking, then this apostle is like a resounding symbol, a pen that may be useless with the apostle's speech totally powerless. To illustrate how much this comes from the Holy Spirit, there is even a parable in the Gospel which is found in Luke chapter 5 verse 4. The apostles had fished all night, fished and fished, and caught nothing with their nets for their efforts, and they only caught one or two fish. This is similar to what the apostles in Western Europe now feel. According to the Pope Benedict XVI, who had been astonished that people seem indifferent to the gospel message, they no longer feel that they need the gospel. When suddenly Jesus comes and says to them, throw the net, throw the net into the deep water, and there the apostles respond, Lord, we have fished all night without catching anything. We have used all the techniques of the apostolate, of sociology, of methodologies, and we have caught nothing. But upon your instruction, let's throw the net. And the net was so full that they couldn't even draw the nets back into the boat they were so heavy. What does this mean? Well, that the apostles must work courageously, and they have done so since Vatican II Council, where the apostolate seem, as in Western Europe, to be quite limited. They did so courageously for some. Some were discouraged. Some even began to preach the end of Christianity and the coming of a new Christianity through an earthly humanism. Fifty years later, fifty years after May 68, you could say that everything seemed to be gone. Now, if the Holy Spirit decided so, and when he decides so, everything could again flourish, why does the Holy Spirit all of this to so occur and he decides it for himself for a simple reason it is he who can decide that Europe is living in a time of spiritual desert which will put the souls of people in a great level of anguish of inner fire and when this desert is deep enough when the thirst of the soul is present when people have everything materially but nothing spiritually he may then decide that the rain of of graces will fall upon the earth because this time the Holy Spirit will be well received.